hello friends. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Hopefully today is treating you kindly. So, so happy that you're here today. Today I am doing the next review in my palette roulette series in which I choose a palette that is in my collection. Maybe you have that palette too in your collection. I utilize it throughout the week and I come back to you. I talk to you about the palette and my experiences with the palette, tell you whether I think it's worth it or not, show you some looks that I created with it, maybe give you some inspiration. And then we pick a new palette to talk about next week. And today the palettes that I am here to review are the Midas Artistry palettes volume 1 and 1.2 and I'm so so excited to talk about these palettes. Midas is a brand that's been on my list for a while now to really dig into, learn about, and get familiar with and I did order their Valentine's Day mystery bundle and these palettes came in that mystery bundle so I'm super excited to talk to you about it today and if that sounds like something that you're interested in please keep watching for those of you new here hi my name is donna so so happy that you found me today i am a lover of all things colorful high-end beauty and self-care dabbling a little bit in indie these days and um i hope that you have found your perfect partner in crime i want to be that person for you i want to be the one that's going to tell you you do you boo that it doesn't matter what anybody has to say that age is just a number. I am a lady who is in her 40s and is often told you can't do those things, you can't wear those things, those colors don't look good on somebody your age, those sparkles don't look good on somebody your age, and I'm here to say you do you. I'm gonna do what makes my heart fulfilled and you should also do what makes your heart fulfilled. So with that said, you do you boo. Let me be your perfect partner in crime. I think that you've come to the right place. I also know that I'm pretty freaking awesome to hang out with once in a while, and I do upload content multiple times a week. I would love to welcome you into this family. With that said, let's move into the review. As I said today, we are reviewing the Midas Cosmetics Artistry 1 and 1.2 palette, and these are what they look like. The packaging of the product is nearly the same. That's kind of a complaint that I have about these. The only thing that differentiates the two is that one is a little bit darker than the other as far as the word Midas goes, and then in little tiny print right here, if you can see it, one says volume one and one says 1.2, and that is it. And then when you open them up, they also appear to look the exact same. <laughs> I'm here to tell you they're not the exact same, but they are fairly, fairly similar, and I do not believe that you need both in your collection, but you can get them both on a discount. So these palettes come in at $16 a piece on the Midas Cosmetics website, or $30 for both, so you do get a little bit of a discount if you get both. The biggest takeaways from these palettes as far as differences go is this duochrome that's over here, over here. One of them is more purple pinky tone and the other one is more gold tone when you get them on an eye look. But other than that, like the shades almost could be the same. I have every single shade in both of these palettes on my eyes today and I don't really think that you would know it. What I will say as well is that no matter what I did, they all look the same. As a matter of fact, there's going to be a picture that you will see of an eye look I did several days ago with the one duochrome and I'm doing an eye look today using every single shade in these palettes. So I have 12 shades in my eye look today and they look the exact same. And that eye look was done with four shades and this one has got 12 on my eyes. So they almost look, I mean, there are some differentiating factors, right? My under uh, lower lash line looks different. My duochrome on my eye might look a little bit different. I did pack a little more color into the outside of, in the outer V of the eye look. But other than that, they look, they look pretty similar, really. So with that said, I do not think that you need both of these palettes in your collection. As I said, these do come in at $16 each, or you can get both of them in your collection for $30, that is the discount that you get when you buy them in a bundle. They are vegan, cruelty-free, and made in the PRC. And you know, that really makes it so that they're able to offer these palettes at the really great price that they do. Um, there is 0.42 ounces total in each one of these palettes, or each pan is 0.07 ounces of product, which is just a smidge bit bigger than what you're gonna get in a ColourPop single shadow. So I do not think that these are priced badly. I think that actually they're priced quite well for the amount of product that you get and for the shades that you get. The two palettes are made with a similar color because they have a similar purpose, but with that hint of diversity and inclusion in mind. So one of them is made for light skin, whereas the other one is made for dark skin with the idea of pastels for any skin tone in mind. And I thought that that was such an amazing purpose behind the brand. The brand does say that it is an Afro Latina owned indie brand since 2018. So it hasn't been in the works for very long. I mean, we are looking at year three that this brand has been out. It's owned by Rocio Nunez 
and it has a heavy emphasis on diversity and inclusivity. They want every person and every skin tone to feel loved, appreciated, and celebrated. They have collabs with Smoky Glow, Neon MUA, and The Basic B. The one with The Basic B just came out, and I have it in my basket. I do plan to purchase it. It's called Perception, I think it's what it's called. And it is an amazing palette. I'm so excited about it. The one with Smoky Glow I actually quite love, but I do not have it in my collection. I'm going to pull these down for a second. I do not have it in my collection just because I have a ton of pinks and purples in my collection as it stands and I don't think that it's going to bring any kind of um, uniqueness to my collection but I do want that perception palette with the basic B. And you can see the inclusivity and diversity lines like crossing in almost everything that they make. They have one of the collabs that they made with Neon MUA. He has a face palette out there that has four different color stories and they're called I think Dawn midday dusk and midnight i think is what the four that midday one i think i maybe have wrong i can't remember what the fours are i'll put it up here in the screen but it's one face palette with the same kind of like color story to it made for four different skin tones which i thought was brilliant so you're really seeing that whole diversity and inclusion piece throughout their entire brand offerings i thought that is such a stellar idea for a brand and i could not applaud rocio anymore than what I already have and what I'm already telling you for going about this route with her brand. I think that's so smart. So smart. And it's something that the beauty industry has been screaming about for a very long time. So I cannot wait for them to come up with like foundations to see exactly what the shade range is going to be on those foundations because we already have so many brands out there with a diverse amount of shade ranges for their foundations. I cannot wait to see what a brand does when this is their stitch, right? This is this is what they're going after. This is their actuality of their baseline for their brand, their mission for their brand. So that's exciting to me. So each one of these palettes has five mattes and one shimmer. That one shimmer is a duochrome, and I already kind of gave you the baseline for that one duochrome shade. The differences between the two is one leans more gold and one leans more pink purple. Um, I do have the pink purple one on my eye look today. What I will say is as this one like kind of wears away, it turns a little more golden. So there's that, like when the dual chromey, you know, masterpieces on the, you know, dual chrome go away, it is a little more yellow in nature, maybe like a little pastel yellow. These, these were launched in October of 2020 as part of their fall collection, which I thought was just funny because when we think of fall, these are typically not the colors that we think about, right? We think about like grungy greens and oranges and ambers and neons is probably not it sis but these were their fall fall offering and these were amazing they sold quite well from what i remember um they perform best i feel like over a white based primer it doesn't have to be a tacky primer so to speak but it does have to be a white base i found that even on my skin tone some of the shades did not pop quite as much as i wanted them to over a non-white base this yellow and the lighter skin ones specifically I do have for those of you who don't know I do have a very light skin tone but it leans very warm and olive so sometimes yellows just don't show up on my skin tone sometimes greens just don't show up on my skin tone and I think that's why I kind of steer away from pastels honestly because I can't get pastels even though I am a lighter skinned person to look all that fantastic on my light to medium warm to olive complected skin my skin is very all over the place so I have like 50 different shades of foundation over there and all of them I can make work depending on the season it's very strange <laughs> I feel like they do work best over a white primer and even then there's still like some some of those shadows that just don't perform super well they don't pack a super super great punch I do have this yellow in my upper brow area today and you can see that you can hardly see it so it is also underneath my eye um, blending out that green on my lower lash line and again you can see that you can't hardly see it so I do feel like that of all the shades that's probably the one I could do without the most I did really have a good time with the rest of them so with that said the mattes are very pigmented they're very blendable they play well with each other and they play well with other formulas I did have an opportunity to use a ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in one of my looks that you guys will see coming up on my lid and they blended very well sometimes you see some formulas kind of lift and create voids with other formulas i didn't find that that happened at all with these mattes there is a smidge bit amount of fallout but nothing to speak of honestly it's next to none and these are super hard pressed so you're not going to get a whole bunch of kick up in the pan you can see i did use both of these palettes a lot over the last 
week and the the palette still looks very clean because there's no like kick up in the pan they are they're pretty pretty densely pressed I do feel like some of the shades require a little bit of building up to get the opacity that you want that yellow namingly being the one that comes to mind specifically but also this lighter green maybe just a smidge bit as well and dependent on what you're going over the top of obviously if you're not using a white base primer you're probably going to have to build these up just a smidge bit more there are pastels so pastels you do have to if you want total opacity you do have to build them up nine times out of ten um the duo chrome in each palette is beautiful on first application it is stunning i do have it in my eye look today the one that i have in my eye look is in the number one palette the artistry number one palette is this guy and it is like this really purple pinky duo chrome and it is in on my lid today i do have this one which is the yellow in tone one on just the inner portions of my eye look but i do have it in another eye look that you guys will see a picture of I think that they're both stunning. They're they're so pretty. Because of the nature of the palettes, they look almost the exact same in an eye look or make the eye look look the exact same. I wish there was a little bit of differentiation between the two duochromes, but I get why it exists the way it is. These are supposed to be pastel palettes, so if it was like a darker purple green or a, a brighter like pink green, then it wouldn't be necessarily a pastel palette, right? Um, they have a white base, so they could be very sheer. I will say also that they kind of explode all over your face all day long if you don't lay down a glitter glue. And the only reason why I say that is because I wear glasses on a daily. And the last time I wore one of the duochromes on my lid without the glitter glue, and you know throughout these reviews I do it with primer, without primer, with glitter glue, without glitter glue, wet dry whatever when I don't put a glitter glue down for these duochromes they exploded all over my glasses I think I washed my glasses off like five times while I had my eyeshadow on on the day that I wear it without the glitter glue I will and they don't appear to have glitter in them so to speak but you do need to wear like some kind of glue base with them or they will explode all over your face you will have it all over the place I read something about their new their newest palette the the new collab with the basic B having a different formulation for their shimmers so I'm interested in that palette also to see how the formula differentiates from this one I'm not sure if this is the particular shimmer formula that they're talking about that need to be reformulated though um so but I'm, I'm interested in that let's talk about the differences in the palette right now like I said one of them is darker this would be your deeper one and one of them is lighter just in how Midas appears in the palette one of them does say artistry one and the one is over here but on this one, the 1.2 is over there and it's very small. Uh, when you open them up, I don't know if you guys can see the font on the shade names, but also it's super light on a light background. So it makes it very hard to read the shade names of the palette. I think I've got them, but I'm not really sure. They do look very similar, but uh, the dual chromes are different. The greens are a smidge bit different. I'm going to swatch them for you so that you guys can see the differences in them. So I'm first going to go through the deep palette and swatch all of these ones and then I will swatch that one next to them. I think this one is called Possibilities and Lessons, I think. I'm not going to get hung up on the names though. So those are those two. And then we have the blue and the yellow. So we've got yellow and blue. Then we've got the green, which I'm going to put right here. So this is all the mattes in the Deep Artistry palette. They're counterparts in the Light Skin Artistry palette. The yellow and the blue and the green. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference between the greens. I think the blues, you can see a little bit of a difference and the purples, you can see a difference obviously. But the yellow and the coral, they look almost the exact same. And on an eye look, honestly, the blue looks the exact same as well. I just feel like, honestly, I don't need both of these palettes in my collection. Number one, I don't pull for pastels very often. Um, but when I do, I dang sure don't need two different shades of the same pastel shade. Does that make sense? So the two duo chromes in the palette, this one's in the deep palette, this one's in the light palette. And those guys look like this so this is the light palette this is the deep palette you can see they look very similar yet different one's a little more gold one's a little more pink but i feel like they both have the same like kind of baseline because when i flip them over and look at them they're opposite like the deep one looks purple 
or looks gold and the light one looks purple. I, they look very different but I think depending on how I turn my hand they could look the exact same to be honest. I don't think that I need both of these palettes in my collection. With that said I do love them and it makes me hunger for more Midas Cosmetics. I do wish that the shade names on the palettes weren't so hard to read because I do think just looking at them I do think that they are probably really awesome shade names like really like accountability kind of shade names which I think is smart for the premise of this brand but you can't you can't read them they're script and they're like iridescent and they're tiny so I mean if there were any critique I could make that would be it with that said I don't need both of these palettes in my collection I did enjoy my time with the deep one more than I enjoyed the light skin one because I'm not really a pastel chunky but then this one shows up on my skin a little less pastel-y even though it is still pastel-y and I really love this pinky duochrome a whole lot more than I love the gold duochrome because I don't do gold very often then I am decluttering than the one that is for the light skin tones because I just don't feel like I need to have it in my collection those are the duochromes the one in the deep skin tone is artistry volume one and that has the pinky shade duochrome that's the one i enjoy more so i feel like it's not as pastel on my skin even though i think that these are vibrant pastels and would show up on many a skin tone in a way that you need them to i really love this brand though i love what this brand stands for and i'm super excited to get more familiar with midas cosmetics if i'm honest they also when i purchased this i was sent also the lip glosses that came with this collection and those lip glosses are so comfortable. What I would say though is steer clear of the ones that do have a little bit of sparkle in them because the ones with sparkle in them you can kind of feel the grittiness of the sparkle. So I'm going to be decluttering Midas Volume 1.2 but I'm going to be keeping Midas Volume 1. And with that said I'm super excited to pull a new palette so I am going to pull a new palette and we will get you out of here today. All right, so I figured why not just stick around on this indie bandwagon and let's pull in another palette from an indie brand. This is the Kaleido Kale This is the Kaleidos Club Nebula palette. Now I do have a three looks one palette with this palette because I did review it right after it came out. I did purchase it on launch because I just love Angelica. I feel like she and I are kind of kindred spirits out here. But also uh, Kaleidos is a brand that I wanted to try and I thought no better way than to try them out when they're collabing with somebody who I absolutely love. So this is what the palette looks like. I feel like it is going to be pretty fun to hang out with and I'm going to try and do some looks with it that I did not do in my three looks one palette and I know that I didn't get nearly as much time with this palette as I wanted to. I did that three looks one palette all in one day and my eyeballs hated me at the end of the day. So I cannot wait to come back to you next week and talk about this palette. I hope that you are in it to win it as well. Uh, with that said, what palette are you using throughout the week? Are you utilizing just one palette one week like I am here or what are you doing? If there is a particular palette that you'd love to see me review in the coming weeks, please let me know. I do have two palettes in my shop, my stash, which will be coming through the next, you know, few weeks in one of these palette roulettes as well. But for now, I'm just trying to, I did used to use an app. Would you guys like to see me use an app more than make those decisions myself? I find it a little difficult to make those decisions myself, honestly, but the app just wasn't pulling what I wanted it to pull. I also have a haul coming soon. You guys will see I hauled in quite a few new palettes into my collection. So let me know if there's a palette that you would love to see me review for you I would love to make that happen for you and um, with that being said yeah that's all I got for you cookies so again thank you so much for coming today I'm super happy that I was able to spend some moments of time with you I know that our moments are precious so thank you so much for utilizing part of your day to spend some time with me I hope that you like this video enough that you're considering giving it a big thumbs up it really does help our channels out here I also hope that you liked it or me enough that you're considering subscribing before you go if you do that please hit the notification bell I would hate to not show up in your feed and yeah I just hope 2021 is treating you all kindly I hope you and yours are well out there and I hope that you're loving each other, but loving each other from afar. And until next time. I just poked myself in the eye. <laughs> until next time. Bye, friends.